All right, good to go. The chair notes the time is 6.01 p.m. I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge, and as ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. We'll begin with a roll call of the ZBA members. Steve Judge is present. Mr. Philip White. Present. Mr. David Sloboda. Present. Ms. Hilda Greenbaum. Present. Ms. Sarah Marshall. Here. The quorum is present. Also attending the public hearing tonight is Mr. Rob Wachilla, planner for the town. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to observe the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of the members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access proceedings in real time via technological means. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. In accordance with provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and recorded by town staff, and they may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube webpage and the YouTube channel and ZBA webpage. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen or by pressing pound nine on their phone. The staff, the chair with the assistance of the staff will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where the information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting is a portion when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and then evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board, is, board has 90 days from close of hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the day of filing for the variance to file its decision. No decision is final until a written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed with the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed in the town, with the town clerk, there's a 20 day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body of Superior Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, public hearing on ZBA 2024-16, Craig and Rachel Gibson, request for a modification to an existing special permit, ZBA FY 2015-00027, under sections 10.33 and 3.3241.6 of the zoning bylaw. The change the occupancy status of a converted dwelling from owner occupied to non owner occupied with residential manager, or with resident manager, excuse me, with the requested waivers from traffic impact study, lighting and landscaping plans. At 50 McClellan Street, map 11C, parcel 189, RG, general residence zoning district, and this is continued from 4-11-2024. Following that, there will be a general public comment period on any matter not before the board tonight. Other member uh, business not anticipated within the last 40 hours and adjourned. Before we go to our first order of business, I want to thank Mr. White for uh, chairing last week. I also want to um, note that Ms. Greenbaum and Mr. Sloboder have been reappointed. Ms. Greenbaum has been reappointed to another term as an, as an alternate. And Mr. Sloboder is a full member of the ZBA. So congratulations to both of you. And I look forward to continue to working with you. And Ms. Marshall, I appreciate your diligence in continuing to serve, even though your term will be coming to an end. Uh, and you're doing lots of other really important <laughs> business for the town. I don't know if you have, how you have time for all this, but you well, deserve Well, I our... disappeared for a month, <laughs> but I'm yeah. back. Thank you. <laughs> you deserve our thanks for all you're doing as well. So thank you. And congratulations, Mr. Greenbaum and Mr. Slover.
The first order of business tonight is a public hearing. Um, ZBA FY 2024-16, Rachel and Craig Gisbon, Gibson, request for a modification to an existing special permit, ZBA FY 2015-0027, under sections 10.33 and 3.3241 of the zoning bylaw to change the occupancy status of a converted dwelling from owner-occupied to non-owner-occupied with a resident manager. With requested waivers from tra traffic impact study, lighting, and landscaping plans, at 50 McClellan Street, Map 11C, Parcel 89, RG, General Residence, Zoning District, continued from April 11th, 2024. The first to ask, is there any members who have any um, declarations to make? Yes. Um, my son owns several properties abutting this one, but I have no financial interest in any of his financial dealings, and I feel the his owning that property will not impact in any way on my ability to act objectively. Any other disclosures from members of the board? Okay. Mr. Chair, uh, yes. this isn't relevant to disclosures, but I wanted to let you know that uh, my internet's acting up again. So if I drop out of the video, that's why. It's so I can try to preserve the bandwidth. Got it. Thank you. Um, we'll go through submissions. Uh, there was no uh, site visit. Um, submissions are listed in the project, the draft project application report. ZBA submissions are ZBA FY 2024 applicant submissions, which are the application form, a management plan, a complaint response form, a standard lease sketch agreement, and a second floor sketch. Those are from the applicant. Staff submissions include ZBA FY 2015-27 decision document, uh, the 2015 approved plans, sheet one and two, which are first floor and existing conditions. Also includes um, elevations and a building section. And they have also requested waivers on a lighting plan, a landscape plan, and a traffic impact study. Um, those are the submissions. I fear we have we have nothing else, do we, Rob? No, I do want to note the management plan. Um, they had to redo the management plan because of the occupancy status changing. So just be aware that the management plan they submit is newer from the original permit back in 2015. I mean, but that's the one we have in our yes, package, yes. Right? So the one we have now is the most recently updated management plan that includes the additional information for uh, rental uses. Got it. Okay. Um, and do we have any public comment submissions? Uh, none that I'm aware of, Mr. Chair. I didn't receive any um, right. between now and a couple weeks ago. All right. So um, who is representing the applicant? So we have a Mr. Craig Gibson in attendance. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, send them a panelist invitation. Craig, you just have to accept it on your end, and then you'll rejoin the meeting. All right, Mr. Gibson, uh, good. You unmuted yourself. Uh, give us your name okay. and address for the record. This and is Craig Gibson. I'm at work. I'm not very familiar with Zoom, so I'm happy that I got here. <laughs> you, you've done great so far. <laughs> um, so what? My name is Craig Gibson. I live and own 50 McClellan Street. Got it. Um, so you can proceed and, and uh, give us your presentation. Uh, I'm sorry that my wife is not here. She's on a business trip and traveling it today. Um, and um, we bought a new house. We're moving to Ashfield and um, next to my dad and my brother and my uncle in Ashfield. And it's a house that we were looking at for a while. Um, the house on 50 McClellan Street is a house that I grew up in. I, we bought it, my family bought it in 83. It is my family home. Um, we plan to keep this in the family and eventually pass it on to my children, uh, Phoebe and Levi. And um, we are going to 
we're planning on renting it in the meantime. It has been a rental in the past for 13 years at a period when I was in college and living out of town. Um, we in, uh, I inherited the house um, when my mother passed. Uh, we took it over in 2014. We've done significant upgrades to it. And in 2015, we uh, we did a significant upgrade. And I think one of the stipulations was that it was owner occupied. We had no intention of moving out, but now you know things change. Um, our intention with the rental is to have a, uh, we have an efficiency, a mother-in-law in the back, which was my mother's studio at one point. And uh, we've had a renter in there since 2015. Um, and it's usually grad students that we do. We've had grad students in the past, for the most part. Uh, in the ha main house that where we live now is going to be furnished. It is uh, four furnished bedrooms. And in my, and with my, uh, in in my house with my stuff so um <laughs> i'm not planning on having parties or a reckless we're, we're keeping care of this this is the house that i built on a lot of a lot of things that i i built and stuff so i take care of it i'm going to be the managing property manager on that i will come to mow the lawn when needed um and take care of any or hire any uh things that need, you know, if there's electrical outage, I will get that dealt with either, you know, I'll, I'll hire that out. I'll be the manager. So uh, as far as parking goes, uh, the efficiency, the mother-in-law in the back gets the left driveway and the uh, uh, tenants in the main house get the right driveway. Um and if there is people more cars than 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 spaces, they'll have to do like there is a you can buy a parking pass in from from the town. It's a zone two, and uh, depending on your plate, it's either three hundred three hundred dollars or a hundred dollars if it's an out of state plate. Um. As far as snow removal, we do have room for five cars on the property uh, if there's a no parking on the street. And there's also a designated lots, I think, in town for when there is uh, a need for more spaces off street. Uh, lighting, we have a porch light. We have a porch light in the back with the efficiency. We have a porch light on the, on the main house. And there is a traffic light, traffic uh, lighting right above our house, right at the junction of Beston and McClellan, uh, that lights up our front. We have no floodlights or motion sensor lights. Um, garbage is in a good location off street and by my shed, tucked away, and that needs to be taken back. Uh, garbage days are on Mondays and need to be remove back in, you know, if there's a complaint by the neighborhood that my tenants are not taking in the garbage, I would like to know that. And I hope, and also, uh, my stepfather lives on Beston Street, which is four houses down from mine. He is the one that managed the property for 13 years when it was a rental property. He's also lived in the house. He is a contact along with my wife and I. My wife and I are the main contacts, but we have Gabor Lukacs at 44 Beston Street, who has lived in this house and will go over in any kind of emergency. He is very familiar with it and has lived there. Um, I think those are the basics. Do uh, you have anything else? Um. I note on the second floor of the main house, there's five rooms, four bedrooms and an office. Is that right? Or there's, there's an office up um, on the second floor. No. On the second floor, there was four bed, four rooms. Four rooms. And then there's one larger bedroom on the first floor. Okay. But there's there's a room that's not designated as a bedroom up on the fifth no, floor. No, it's, it's too many people for the house. We're going to have... No, no. Three bedrooms well, upstairs, and then 
one of them we're going to designate as an office. It also doesn't have a closet, so you need to have a closet with each uh, bedroom, and that doesn't have one. And does it have a door on it? Oh, yes. It does. One of the concerns that you, we have at times is that the renters will lease out, will rent that other room out as a bedroom, not a legal bedroom. How are you? How would you prevent that from taking place? Sometimes we ask for the door to be taken off so that there's it can't be used effectively as a bedroom. How, how are you going to deal with the potential for that room to be, without your permission, be used for another student or another renter? Um, I, I, we are going to be on property enough to know if there's other people there. We also have a ring doorbell on there that... Uh, you know, you can tell if there's five people living in that part of the house. Mm -hmm. um, we are it, we're pretty cautious with how we rent. We've rented. We have been landlords in the past. If you would like me to take the door off, that's but that also uh, makes it difficult for people to study. In yeah. a, in a, it, would that be the responsibility of the residential manager to ensure that the um, other you other room is not used as a bedroom yeah okay okay that that's another possibility and so not yeah. only okay so i'm i'm just trying to ensure that there's we don't open up the possibility of a, a fifth tenant in that one unit i don't want a fifth person in there i don't want them i don't want a fifth person showering and using more dishwater and and uh, putting extra wear and tear on the house. I agree with you. I do not want a fit person in that house. And I will be sure that, that I'll be very angry if that happened. Mr. Wachilla, do you have something to add? Yeah. So, I mean, a suggestion could also be uh, maybe padlocking the door too, only used by the landlord or the owner or something. I don't know if that's something the board has done in the past, but. Oh, I'm hoping that it, they use it as a study, an area okay. for studying if they're students. Okay. I mean, it's just a. You're leaving an office a desk in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, the other question I had is I noted in your application that you're going to leave the, the house furnished. Yeah. Uh, your existing furnishings in the house. So does that. We're going to leave it. We're going to leave furnishings in the house. A lot of it will be ours and we okay. have, we will have bought everything. Okay. And you're renting out by room as opposed to, you're not renting out to a group of four individuals. We're renting this out by individual to individual and by room. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, we have uh, conducted interviews by Zoom and in person with each person. Uh, my wife is the one that does that mostly, and she's very particular. And there's a lot to choose from. It's very, uh, apartments are very... Oh, you're just, you just froze up. Would you say that apartments are in demand? Is that what you were going to say? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, another question I had was, you, there is one, there's a total, I thought there were a total of four parking spaces on the property, two on the right and two on the left. There is, there's actually five. There's five, but you're permitted to have, I thought the, the permit was for four. Yeah, I, I agree. I would, I would rather not have four on the on the property but there is available for four and there's also uh in front of the house you could have you could get your uh, another one if they wanted to if one of them wanted to buy a permit for a zone two i mean you they can all buy a zone two if they want yeah. um, so are, are you going to then tell the two tenants in the big house in the main house two tenants you can have a car on the property and the other two are not going to have a car on the property. And have to, if they have a car, they have to get town parking. Is that how you're going to manage the the parking on, in the uh, yes? On the line? Yes. Okay. Well, I think that's maybe we would put that. It's not stated in the parking or the management plan, but that might be a condition that the board would want to consider. Is that the two um, two parking places for the main house are designated by in, in the lease and that the other people are required to park on the obtain uh, city parking permits would you would that be acceptable yeah and also we it's a it's an attractive person who sends in an application that doesn't have a car 
We yeah. are downtown, walking distance to all the universities and bus systems, and downtown for food and shopping and uh, having it's an ideal place not to have a car so, yeah. that is that is also that is attractive to us sure and one last point um, on the complaint response form you just had listed you and your wife as a few people to contact and in your narrative you talked about um gabor, as, yeah, gabor as, I, as, I think um, i put him his, his name in there he is you know i don't think i i thought it was just um, I'll look at it real quickly here. Complaint response form. It just has. Oh, and the complaint Rachel yeah, Gibson in there. So, and the other one would be, uh, what about the residential manager on the complaint response form? You can have up to three people. You're going to hire a residential manager. Um, one of your tenants, correct? We can. Yeah. I, I, I look at it more like a pyramid being me and my wife at the top. So if yep. there's a complaint, all of them should be, if there's anything that needs to be done, that comes to me, I wouldn't, so. Well, there's some stuff that could be immediate, you know, and that's what the notion of a residential manager in a non-unoccupied building is, is somebody who's on site that can respond quickly. So your neighbor can respond fairly quickly but the requirement is to, for a residential manager. And the notion there is for somebody that can respond quickly to either complaints of noise or a problem in the house that they then have to get a hold of you. But well, I'll read you the, I'll get a hold of the definition of a residential manager in a second. Um, I'll open it up to question, other questions from members of the board. Do people have questions? Uh, Mr. Sloviter. Um, um... Most of my questions have to do with the nature of the residential manager as a presence on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'd like to hear about how you will select the resident manager because that's in your application. Uh, when, when the chair asked you about it a moment ago, you said, I think you said, I'm not trying to quote you, but it, um, I think you said, yes, we could do that when he asked you going to hire a residential manager. I'd never so plan to, but. Um, I, I'd i like to know, well, it's in, I believe it's in the application that residential ma resident manager is, is mentioned. So I would like to know how that person will be selected and what, the status will be in in the um, building. Uh, if if you're renting individual rooms, then that could imply that the four tenants in the main house do not have a connection. So it's not that you're renting it to four people, one of whom will be the resident manager and they have a connection. So how will you um, select the resident manager and under what conditions will that person serve? So the res, I guess the resident manager, we do have one bedroom that might be a hundred dollars more, $200 more. I can't remember how my wife had it set up, but that person is in the first floor uh, bedroom, which is quite much larger. And if they, if they were the resident manager, we can have them, as a forward contact on the ZBA uh, for the town to call in case there's a uh, noise complaint or the trash cans are out or uh, one of the cars is honking incessantly or whatever the reason is, um, they can, I'll put their phone number on that. And also they can be the first contact for to Rachel and I, if there is a complaint among the, the four tenants or and uh and or need something done with the house such as uh a, a maintenance problem well i i i guess that what i'm the concern that uh, that leads me to ask these questions is i'm not so concerned about uh a plumbing issue that they need to deal with you to get repaired I'm concerned about the effect on the neighborhood of 
a non-owner occupied building. There's a direct correlation proven over and over that non-owner non occupied uh, has a strong correlation to properties that are disturbing to the properties around it. So if one of the four people in the big bedroom or not, I don't care, is the resident manager, what authority will you be vesting in this person over the other tenants? What will the defined role of this person be? I'm, I'm uncomfortable with a responsible property that has been responsibly administered because it's owner occupied, becoming non owner occupied in a sort of informal arrangement. And this is, you, you'll be in Ashfield, which is a considerable distance if there's a problem. If, and, and once we grant, if we do, that this can be non owner occupied, then any, any intent, certain intentions that you may have in terms of how this will operate are not part of the, the permit that you'll have. You'll be, you'll be able to rent it or, or not rent it if there's no structured way of defining the resident manager. So what authority would this person have? Could this person control the other people if there's a problem can what would they be able to do um what could they be able to do um well first i would think they would call me or gabor if it needs a more immediate stuff and rachel um powers like evicting people are you saying or or I, no, but if if you're not, I guess if if there is a disturbance, what authority would this would the resident manager have over anybody else in the building if you're not reachable, if Gabor is not reachable? If there's if you were if you when you're living there, if if you were in the place and you're the owner with the authority of an owner, and there is a problem with a tenant, you would be there to deal with it. I don't expect you to shoot anybody or go after them with a club, but you would at least be present with the inherent authority of an owner. What authority will be vested in a resident manager? Because I don't, I, I'm curious, how, you know, how you're going to appoint this person. This is what I don't understand. I guess I'm not finding it either. Um, I'm, not, I'm having trouble with the concept too, because powers like i mean if if there's a disturbance and there's a party or there's a fight they would call the police and if they couldn't catch me or gabor um powers like I, i'm i don't i'm not sure where you're trying to get at i'm sorry I'm well, for a base let's look at the a baseline of what's in the zoning bylaw for a definition of a resident manager so it's 12.42 Resident manager is a live-in resident of a rental residential use, qualified and responsible for implementation of the property management plan and for managing and coordinating the maintenance, housekeeping, and administrative duties for the rental units under their charge. So their duties are managing and coordinating, uh, for managing and coordinating the maintenance, housekeeping, and administrative duties for the rental units under their charge and for the implementation of the property management plan. So that's the that's the state of responsibilities in the that's the minimum right and the zoning bylaw is what you need to how you need to empower the resident manager and then Mr. Sloboder had questions about how you're going to select and choose the resident manager and, and if you give him uh, and what authority you would have on a, um, a disturbance or something else um, some complaint to him as the first he or she as the first stop. I would assume we'd pick someone that uh, we felt was responsible enough and was 
uh, confident enough of calling us or uh, or um, or talking to. I mean, if they if there's maintenance that needs to be done, cleaning needs to be done by the by the group and maybe dictated by the manager and making sure that things were kept up like we don't want the garbage to uh build up or dishes to be built up or uh if there's uh extra people in the house the manager would say no you cannot have this uh, extra people or family members or whatever in the house um and i'm sorry we're gonna have to tell leave uh the the, the owners this and um just making sure that the house is kept up and clean and uh that is not going to get burned down and things are, are not getting worn down and um things like fire fire uh extinguishers and uh batteries and the alarms are kept in there in the proper places and we would hire that we would find that and we would uh give them a discount as um as the manager to to fulfill that role I interrupted you, Mr. Sloboder. I just wanted to provide the the site and the I, the site on the site. Go ahead. No, I pre I appreciate that, especially if I'm not making myself entirely clear. Are you um are you going to rent to undergraduate students no. or grad they, students? Well, we can't say that, but that's not our plan. Your what what is your plan? Grad students. Grad students would be the best. Have you considered renting the entire larger unit to a family? It has. You're, we have. We are considering that. We have been approached by a uh, by a person that wanted to um, uh, to an Afghan family. Okay. I all right. I, I don't. Doesn't matter to me where a family comes from. Actually, understood. Uh, yes, I think that would be. Uh, we, we're considering it. We have a. There's that a, would that would eliminate I'm only speaking for myself that would eliminate a lot of concerns that I have about renting it to four unrelated undergrads uh obviously the it's likely the revenue we for don't, the four we don't, rooms don't would to, not be as sorry we don't want to go to undergrads I'm I'm sorry say that again please we prefer not to rent to undergrads or to groups or to groups but okay but once you get a permit you you could and it's it's it needs to be formalized so there would be likely less revenue if it was rented to a family but it would be a more stable rental situation in terms of the neighborhood is that is that something other than an Afghan family or whoever you've been talking to, are there other families that might rent the large unit? No family has uh, applied. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, Rob, you had your hand up and then I wanna to go to, to, for clarification, then I wanna to go to Ms. Greenbaum and then Ms. Marshall in that order. Sure, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So. Basically, uh, Mr. Silver's point, you know, you have to be cautious when trying to condition and such because that could be seen as discriminatory. And, you know, yeah. you have to be careful. I mean, the landlords have the right to vest um, possible tenants to the interview process if they so choose, whoever is a right fit. Um, the board can only go so far as to limit, say, the number of occupants, and that's pretty much it. So, I we mean, you do bring now, and we're 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 taking those applicants so it undergrad stuff we prefer to do this and that but we can't and also you know not. the the applicant is as the landlord allowed to to rent only to um non undergrads if they wanted to i mean that's up to them i just think that you have to the board itself cannot make that a condition because that's overreaching on their end but they are free, but the landlord is free to choose only grad students or families if they wish, correct? If if they the owner feel, is 
they can if they if that tenant fits within their policies right. and they if seem the like a good fit. If the result of their decisions and their yes. qualifications, they just can't they can't discriminate against the person themselves. That's yeah. that's the big thing they can't do. Um, and also, I just want to throw in the mix that the resident manager is a requirement for converted yeah. dwellings if they're non owner occupied. So right. it's kind of being forced on the applicant. That's just how it is in the bylaw. So, yeah. you know, I do recommend the board also, you know, we could explore adding some conditions for the resident manager as well. And one of them I thought could be a good addition could be having that contact info provided to inspection services every time there is a new resident manager who would come in because you have to anticipate, you know, there's going to be turnover of the resident manager if a new tenant comes in. So that person's going to change um, pretty frequently. So yeah, you might want to keep that in mind too. Ms. Greenbaum, you were next. Um, I'm seeing several red flags that I had put up when I was reading through the application. I think Mr. Gibson is rather naive about managing properties, especially in a university town. Um, the first, I, I'd like to say I wish that we had had a site visit because I'm confused about the parking. I don't know what, it's a very, very small lot, but only six lots on that whole street of 25 units is uh, our, our uh, legal lots. Most of them are very, very small, like this one is. So I would have liked to have seen the parking plan, but the biggest thing here is renting to room by room. And the bylaw very clearly states that this is a situation that becomes a rooming house if you have four different people who are not signing the same lease, who know each other ahead of time. First of all, you're going to run into problems because you're going to have people moving in and out. You're going to have problems collecting the rent from four people at one time, unless that's the job of the resident manager to pull the, pull the rental checks together. And uh, they feel less obligation to fulfill the full year lease. If they're not a group that know each other, they don't know if they're going to get along with each other. Two start bickering and makes it uncomfortable for the other two that are still living there. So I would um, reverence right away for people on real. And, and we've been through this on the zoning board before. That's why I'm bringing it up. That, that you're going to have trouble. And if you look under the under the zoning bylaw on the lodging house for people on unrelated renting separate bedrooms is is a rooming house and that has its own rules and regulations requiring a special permit and I believe it has to be owner occupied or a person who owns it who is is running the rooming house so I I I would say that that policy has to be clarified that these are four people on the same lease with equal responsibility for abiding by all the conditions of the lease. And I also found this lease, lease rather um, vague and not, I, I would think that, that others we have seen on this panel can go to 24 pages with all the things or, or longer. I've seen some of the earlier ones that came in when the rent registration first started that stipulates very carefully what everybody's responsibilities are, but four different people renting different rooms is not legal. Unless you get a different permit. Mom, just so we're, I'm trying to, I'm looking for the rooming house definition in the- it's Lodging house. Lodging house. Lodging house. Yep. I didn't look it up. I've got I've got the bylaw right next to me. I can yep. look it up. And I think what I found is lodging house or boarding house, a residential use house in a dwelling, in a single dwelling or part of a dwelling where no fewer than six, but not more than ten, unrelated persons are let or sublet lodging in private rooms or quarters not constituting dwelling units for a definite period of time. Whether Excuse me, can I also say I think there are two categories? I'm, for under three people might be allowed by right, but more than three people is um, requiring I, special you, permit. You have extensive knowledge of the, the bylaw. I, I just don't see it here, Ms. Greenbaum. I, I mean, don't see that in the definition of lodging house. I see what Steve it, was mentioning. 
I can't remember what, but I, I've been through this with, you know, years past. Yeah. And one of that was the reason why they went with the first rent reg registration bylaw, because the, um, it, if people don't know each other and they move in together, especially in a house so small, you're going to, you know, issues of people needing psychological space too. And if they don't know each other, it becomes, I've been there. I mean, I, both as part of this board and in my 60 years learning experience. And I'll tell you, some groups of undergraduates are a lot better than a lot of families I've had over the years too. Well, yeah, you, you, you gotta play, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta be careful. And I've also, had issues with MCAD, and I learned from that and never did that again. Um, oh, all right, any other, Ms. Ms. Marshall? Well, I'd say first that that issue, the lodging, is it a lodging house? If there even is such a classification anymore, better be nailed down pretty soon. Yeah. Um, you know, I know the zoning bylaw has been revised over the years, so maybe Maybe that's not a thing anymore with with for four people. Um, but I wanted to ask the applicant, um, the resident manager, is that going to be like advertised as a job that comes with a with a room? Like, or or are you advertising the rooms and then seeing if somebody would like to be be the manager? Um, because I think you do want, it is a job, it is a responsibility. I mean, that person doesn't, can't, can't violate tenants' rights any more than a, and the owner living in the house can violate tenant rights. I mean, they, there's a limit to how much babysitting, um, a uh, resident manager could do, but but I, I do hope it's it's um, put forward as a as a, a real responsibility. So, if uh, Mr. Gibson could speak to that, um, yeah, I don't know. We haven't really given it much thought about how we're going to actually. Uh, it, it will definitely be a discount, I guess, uh, to not a free room and. Um, yeah. But, but my concern is someone maybe said, well, oh, sure, I'll let you know for 50 bucks or 100 bucks. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it without like really <laughs> understanding what's involved or committing to what's involved. So, um, so, you know, maybe it's, you know, you have these bedrooms to be rented. You also have a bedroom at a discount with a job, you know, job included and, mm -hmm. and just be very upfront and let people apply for that one if, if they want. I would also, I, I think it might work better. I don't have any experience in this, but if it's the person in the studio who's the manager, um, you know, to put a little distance between that person and the, the other tenants who might be having the parties or the fifth person or whatever, it, it would be a little awkward to be living with them so those are my thoughts but I, I go ahead mr gibson if you wish to respond um good ideas thank you I, well i think what, you know those that's the kind of thing that um either you should draft up a, a a few sentences that say what the responsibilities are or we can condition that in the um in the conditions of the responsibilities of the resident manager, I, I feel uncomfortable, kind of uncomfortable doing that from the government standpoint. Um, I thought I wrote a conditional thing when I, in my, in my, in my the thing, but. All right, well, let's look, is so, it in the management report, management plan? Uh, information. Okay. We'll be using one of the tenants as a resident manager and a lead contact required by Amherst bylaw. The resident manager will be responsible for organizing snow removal from sidewalks, driveways, weekly trash management, notifying the owners of repairs needed, and the town contact if needed. 
They are also responsible for communication with owners if tasks need more attention. I guess that, that deals with all the sort of administrative and the, um, the trash and the snow and that kind of stuff that's obvious could be a problem for neighbors. The one yep. thing doesn't, if the one thing it doesn't speak to is, um, you know, if there's um, violations of the lease or the restrictions on or noise or, or nuisance that the, um, the resident manager should try to quell that. And if, if you can't contact um, the owner or the, or the neighbor down the street that you've identified on the complaint response for them. But something like that would delineate more the responsibilities of the residential manager, resident manager. I think that is, is that what you're getting at, Ms. Marshall? And Mr. Slobiter, that's something that you've spoken to, is, is that? So I just, sorry, I just, I was muted there. Yes, I think it needs to be made very clear up front that this is what you're applying for. Like if you want the studio, it, here it is and it's got this job and you know you go into it with your eyes open. I think that would be very clear. Thank yeah. you, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Yep, that's great. Uh, Mr. Sloviter. Yes, Mr. Chair, when you, when you just asked me what I was thinking, the phrase using one of the tenants strikes me as being overly casual and overly informal about this. I think the resident manager needs to be a clearly identified and qualified person for it. It can't just be, I, I think that Ms. Marshall identified something that's very important here. It can't just be somebody who says, uh, yes, I'd like to save $100 a month on my rent, so I'll do it. Maybe at the age of 19, with absolutely no experience and a timid personality, but wants to save $100, that is not qualified in my mind. So I I, I think that, that Ms. Marshall actually touched upon something very important here, which is the process of identifying and in fact, in a way, hiring the resident manager. Mr. I could hire my, my stepfather down the street who's managed that property for 13 years and lived in it and knows it very well. Has to be a resident manager. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a non -manager. that's the bylaw requirement here. Yeah. There's not an exception for, you know, somebody who has done it in the past if they don't live there. Okay. Yep. So you have to have somebody, what we're all, what Ms. Marshall and Mr. Slobiter are, one of the things they're talking about is you have to have somebody there in the building, potentially, and the concerns I've heard are one that there's, uh, it may be better to have them in the studio because then they aren't sort of um, part of the group and they aren't inhibited by going after one of their friends, somebody they become roommates with. So perhaps requiring the studio, the person in the studio apartment to be the resident manager that you hire them to do that. You lay out the responsibilities, including um, the administrative responsibilities and the first contact and their responsibility is to notify you should there be any violations of the lease or um, disturbances to, to the, or nuisance of the neighborhood, something to that I effect. That. I could do that. I mean, that. That's the kind of thing there, I think, that at least is addressing some of the concerns that you've heard from the board members. Okay. Um, all right. So what we want to, I think what we'd like to do is you need to amend your, your management plan to do that because right now you, it's, you're just going to, we'll be using one of the tenants. Um, so we may want to either put that in the condition, Rob, or should, is it best to put that in a condition or is it best to, for him to amend the management plan here at this, at, at the, uh, during the, the meeting? It's up to you as the board. I mean, yeah. if you guys feel you that either. you should, you should have them come back and you can review the management plan again, you could do that, or you could do, you could a, do condition a condition where it has to be amended and submitted after the fact, totally fine, either option. It's up to the group. Ms. Marshall. 
yeah, if it's if the management plan is amended and submitted after the fact, who reviews it? Yeah, just, Rob, just Rob. If it's okay with Rob, then we're good. Probably the billing commissioner, yeah. I would assume. Um, and he other Rob, okay, yeah, other Rob, other Rob <laughs> usually sticks to the book too. Um, okay. but it's it's up to the board. I mean, if the board feels that they want to review it again as a group, that's fine. Or if you trust staff to do it on your behalf, that's also fine. But again, I can't tell you how to right. how to feel about that. But you you on you hear our concern or I do. Yeah. yeah. I, right. I have some written down and we can talk about it towards the end just so we're on the same page. Ms. Greenbaum. I have a section in the bylaw that, that talks about lodging a rooming 3.329 in the table. And um, as defined here, it's illegal in RG. It's not allowed in RG. And I believe that it was the building commissioner decided the separate people who, renting as separate buildings, might have been Robert, might have been Bonnie before him, that ruled that having groups that were not, not constituted friends constituted a boarding house. And that's, a, that's something you may want to check on and continue the hearing to find out what, what the, whether there's an actual statement in the bylaw or that was a um, regulation promulgated by the building inspector. So, I mean, that's, the, it's lodging or boarding houses, which in this case, Ms. Greenbaum, I think does not apply here because number one, in the definition of lodging or boarding house, it's, it's um, no more that it's between six and 10 people. And they're talking about four. Well, so there was some, think, there's another section in there where it might be under accessory uses. And I didn't check the accessory uses right now. But I, I know because it's been enforced in the past that there has to be one lease. You can't have four different people on their own lease. Well, I, and it's, it's bad management practice to begin with because you're going to run into problems even collecting your rent and people moving in and out. It's well, not I, a good idea. It's not I a good can, idea. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Ms. Greenbaum. No, I'm just saying that that I think that we need to find out about, and I, and as I say, I don't remember which manager, which building inspector who was who had ruled that four people on separate leases constituted a rooming house. So what I did earlier today is I talked to Rob Mora specifically about this when I saw Oh, that you it, did? Okay. I did. I, did. I talked to Rob about, not about rooming houses, but about leasing to individuals as opposed to a group for that, for those four units. And what he told me is that they're finding, he is seeing that this is something that is occurring routinely, if not all the time, but frequently, I think is what he used, frequently in leasing multiple um, people in a, in a unit, more than one, when you have up to four people in a unit. That because of technology and roommates finding, uh, roommate sites and other things, landlords are doing this more often. And that is just the way in which people look for rooms now through technology has, and housing has, through technology has changed. And he thinks his advice to me was try to find a way to ameliorate any concerns you have with leasing out to individuals rather than trying to prohibit leasing out to individual leases. Because it's just, you're fighting, you're trying to push a river. Um, he didn't use that term. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. using that term. You're, but you're trying to push a river against the technology which is causing, which is allowing people to act independently and then the landlord to choose individuals together as opposed to choosing four. So that was his, I'm just giving that uh, information to, for the benefit of the board. That's what Rob said this afternoon. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Gerson, well, that's why we're having the problems that we're having in neighborhoods too. Could, uh, Mr. Gibson. Uh, we're not opposed to uh, renting to a group of that goes into the as a, in a group. We just we haven't had it, the applicants at the moment for that. Mm -hmm. um, I would think I I imagine in 
I had some rental experience as a landlord um, that when you do a group there, there's more tendency or more opportunity since they are friends that to have those parties and the, and the loudness uh, because they're so familiar with each other and they are in a, in, in a living situation as a group, as instead of individuals who are um, living individually in, in a property and sharing it and, um, so we prefer to have the individual groups, uh, individual rather than a group, but that was from our own experience. It's not a financial decision. To... No. All right, Ms. Marshall and then Mr. Sloboder. Yeah, I would say <clears throat> um, if, it, if it isn't prohibited to, to rent rooms singly, um, you know the risk. The risk is on the landlord. The tenants will just skip out, <laughs> you know, and and not pay or something. That's, you know, I don't think I don't see that as our problem. I don't see where in the bylaw it says it's prohibited to do so in a converted dwelling. I looked in that section in the lodging house section, and I would caution using that as as the I guess the precedent for for restricting. The applicant to to pursue groups for the bigger unit. I would double check on that, and I could definitely do that if this hearing is continued. And I'll speak with Mister Moore about that. But just from my own initial impression, it seems that if it's not prohibited in the bylaw, then I don't think it's really enforceable. And I, the other thing I want to make sure we adhere to is. What's before us today is the request to change from owner from owner occupied to non owner occupied, and the implications of that mean what that means for us is that what we should be looking at is only things that are directly related to that change of ownership in terms of conditions and findings and everything else. It's not general, you know, not not like a special permit that's brand new. So we have, our mission here is more narrowly targeted. I think one of those. It's, I think it's legitimate to say we, because you have to have a residential manager, we're concerned about the responsibilities and the selection. That's legitimate. That's a very legitimate concern by the board. I think that's right. I'm not sure if it's up to the board to decide whether um, they think that renting by individuals is actually, I don't think that's clear one way or the other. We can act on that if we want. I'm not inclined to do that, but those are the, I think we have to maintain our focus on what is the, what is, the, what is asked of us and what the, what the applicant is seeking, which is a change in the ownership, uh, in, the, in the owner occupancy of the, of the building. Yeah. Mr. Slobiter and then Ms. Marshall, then Ms. Greenbaum. And Rob, you still have your hand up. Is there anything, is there a point of clarification? I'll wait till after everybody's done okay. with their questions. Mr. Slobiter. Okay, so I, ju I just want to clarify what I am pursuing here. This application asked for the change of status to owner occupied. No. There were other no, there were other questions on there about seeking a waiver for parking and lighting. And I asked Mr. Wachilla today about those because I didn't understand what why they were even there. The, the applicants not asking for more parking spaces not asking to put up floodlights or anything. And Mr. Wachilla said that this is sort of a boilerplate part of any application right. and that it's not an issue. So it's not an issue for me at all. So for me, this almost, and I also like to add, I don't care particularly if there are four separate leases or two or one, that's how, how the applicant fills the property with rent with renters also doesn't matter to me. And I agree with the chair that that is not the question before us and it is not in our purview. And it seems highly unlikely to me that it would even be enforceable. So for me, this and this entire question and the part about which I am not yet satisfied comes down to the definition and how to fill the role and the qualifications of the resident manager. That is the 
the change from owner occupied to non owner occupied generally revolves around behavior. And I don't care about dishes in the sink. And I don't care about a whole lot of other things as long as the trash cans come in and the neighbors are not affected. But this to me comes down to the resident manager, how it will be defined, how it will be hired, how it will be qualified. And that cannot be an informal process that we intend to do it a certain way and somebody's down the street and I'll be responsive. This is once we grant an approval, then they are not bound by things that uh, we can't enforce. Mr. Wachilla has pointed out there are certain things we can't enforce, and I'm not even interested in enforcing a lot of them. It's this for me, it comes down to the resident manager. Thank you. Got it. Our, um, let's see who else was who else had their hand up, Mr. Wachilla. Oh, um, excuse me, Mr. Gibson, did you wish to respond? Thank you for those comments. Um, I will, I agree. It should be the studio manager as with a discount and we'll have those regulations. They'll be the ones that with the contact with the ZBA board for if there's any noise complaints, they'll be the ones that will, will be front contact and the enforcers of, of um, the, the rules of the lease. I think that's the way we should do it. Mr. Wachilla. Thank you. Um, so I guess I have a couple questions. Well, one, I wanted to clarify a statement I made earlier regarding um, discrimination. Of course, the applicant as a landowner cannot discriminate against federally protected groups and classes of people. Yeah. Um, and then anything else after that? I mean, um, in terms of graduate versus undergraduate, there's not really anything that's saying that they can't prohibit against that. Um, so I just want to make everybody aware of that. Uh, in terms of what we discussed tonight, in terms of, I guess, the consensus from what I'm getting of the board members is that it's looking like this is going to be continued to a future date. Is that correct from board well, members, or are we I'm, still not there yet? I'm not sure that that's maybe right, but I, okay. but let's not assume that yet because we yeah, may yeah, yeah. Have to solve the resident manager definition through either a man. A, a, we can amend the management plan here, or we can create a condition with specific language and we might okay. be able to, connect, but we'll leave it up to the board. Let's not assume that until we get to that point. I do want to ask then if that's the case and we do get to that point, um, I think we should summarize everything the board wants from Mr. Gibson. So he knows, or we can capture that correctly in the conditions or what needs to be updated in, in the documents you're referencing. Right. We want to do it right. Exactly. Yep. Um, just so people can think about this. I took a cut at, changing the management plan, which could either be an amendment to the management plan for the definition of residential manager, or it could be put as a condition. And we can work this later, but this is the, my initial thoughts. It should read, we will be hiring as opposed to using, we'll be hiring the tenant in the studio unit as a resident manager and lead contact as required by Amherst bylaws. The resident, then it continues as he, as it is submitted to us, the resident manager will be responsible for organizing snow removal from walkways and driveways, weekly trash management, notifying owners of repairs needed, and town contact if needed. They are also responsible for communication with owners if tasks need more attention. I would add the resident manager shall be responsible to notify owners or where appropriate police or other town officials of behavior, which is by tenants, I should say, behavior by tenants, which is in violation of the lease or creates a destructive, a disturbance or nuisance for neighboring property. I think that's kind of what we're getting at. Um, oh, that's good for me. Yeah. But we can, we can massage that a little bit, but I think that's kind of the point we're getting at for the duties of a resident manager. Mr. Sloviter, you've been talking about this a lot, and I want to make sure that I'm on the right track here uh, before we move on to comments from the public or, or other concerns by board members. I think you're on the right track. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Miss Marshall. Yeah. Uh, I, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, 
I was, I, I, I imagine all kinds of things, you know, different scenarios. So what if you, you lease out the studio apartment for 12 months to somebody who then doesn't do the job? Um, that would be a problem. <laughs> so I just wonder if you might want to consider uh, renting that unit like a, a tenancy at will or something it's like so that you have a little control over that person actually performing in return for the discount. Well, I would, you know, that's a good point. I would say that if that person doesn't do the job and it's part of the lease, then they violated their lease too. So if they lease, if they lease the, st the studio apartment, the one bedroom apartment, to somebody on the condition that they're the resident manager and they don't do that, then they violated their lease. So either month by month or the lease might be able to enforce that. Right. So you'd have to put all that language, the duties of the resident manager into that the lease. lease. Yeah. 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 That separate lease. You want right. to, and that's something we could, that could just be done post the hearing. You could submit the, a new lease with that for the studio apartment with the responsibilities in it. Ms. Greenbaum. Yeah, the section on rooming houses is section 5.01 on page 62, and it has the, the two categories of the three and, and the four to six. And I would like, it might not have been Rob who, who made this ruling 10 years ago about how many, you know, whether people on the lease sign one lease and a, a jointly jointly and severally that's the big the big word jointly and severally and i don't know whether i saw that in this lease i also would like this lease tightened up like some of the other leases that are on file for other properties that are much more specific in who 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 does what and who's responsible for what but as i say the jointly and severally becomes a, a an issue when you have four people that don't know each other. So so when we continue it, can we talk to Rob Mora and see whether that was his ruling about the uh, four people on one lease or four leases by the bedroom? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, right now I'm looking at the Article 5 accessory mm -hmm. use is this, but this isn't an accessory use. This is yeah, well, that's the whole issue. What's the difference between four people renting rooms in a house and four people um, who know each other who are a constituted group on one lease jointly and severally responsible for all the conditions on that lease? Well, in order for, well, one, the first one, Ms. Greenbaum, the first one in both 510 and five five zero one zero and five point zero one zero one is that there should be an owner who resides on the premises responsible for the operation. I mean, that's, and there isn't, and that that's why we have this gray area. Here. But but that doesn't. But that's not the. Uh, but we have converted. No, I I, I think it. I don't this think is, this, this is not that. This is. I don't not think this thing. applies to <laughs> that situation. Yes, but I'm telling you, from my other eight years on the zoning board this has come up and and it was there are some notorious cases that made us you know get get involved in 20 years ago with rent control mm -hmm. and the first rent because these kinds of things were creating terrible conditions in neighborhoods that apparently are only gotten worse so i think that somewhere along the line we got to figure out which building inspector or which law from the state or somewhere in the bylaw, I'm not finding it, required that four people be jointly and severally responsible. But, and not, well, maybe that's, but, not, but I, I don't know that that's the case. And in, in talking to Rob, it's, he said it is, it is not required and he's seeing more and more situations where people are renting a four unit renting to four people in a house with separate leases and not with not all in a combined lease. 
And that used to be considered illegal, but he's changing a lot of things I've discovered over the last nine months. He's interpreting things very differently than had been in the past. Well, that's his job. He's supposed to do that. But but that is, let's, okay, so we have, in order to proceed, I guess what I'd like to do is make sure we've gotten, we've identified a couple of issues. The first issue is residential manager and a definition of that job. Secondly, and where they live. Secondly, we have the question about whether separate leases are, um, in, re, separate leases in, in causes to be a rooming house um, and whether it's legal or not. Those are the two issues that I've heard so far. We've talked about parking. I don't hear a lot of concern about parking. I don't hear a lot of concern about the other waivers. I don't hear a lot of concern about if there's a good manager, I don't hear the concern about disturbance to the neighborhood, although that hasn't been discussed a lot, but that, and that may come up yet, but that's, that's what I understand it's been raised. Is there, are there any ish, other issues that we will, that the board is interested in? Ms. Marshall. Well, Ms. Greenbaum um, would like a, a more extensive lease. I don't know if that is in our uh, remit to require. And if it is, can she provide an example or does the- They're the all in town, because everybody files them. They're in the past, we, we've required them. And so they're all in the planning department. So could Rob give such yeah. Yeah. A more detailed- there's, You can find much more detailed leases on other, and I know there's tons of them being filed, yeah. This is too generic. It's not Amherst oriented. I mean, it's taken from some textbook on Massachusetts leases, but uh, you can find more fulsome leases, examples of more fulsome leases in town. Literally. Are there other concerns that people want to talk about before we go to public comment? And I don't want to, I'm not trying to stifle our, our uh, discussion here. So I'm, if you have something, raise it now. Mr. Sloviter. Well, I, I have a suggestion. I, it's not so much a concern at this point. I'm encouraged, actually, that the applicant is not selling the property and that yeah. he, I know, I paid attention. Yeah, thank and you. I, I, my plan is, I love this house. This is the house I went to school in at Wildwood in high school. This is the house that I grew up with. This but is, loving, I don't loving, want to leave the neighborhood. I'm coming back to the Sunday brunches every on the first of every month. I understand, but loving, loving the neighborhood is not part of the approval process. And they're using I, my stuff that I love. Also, this is my house that I'm going to care for. And if I'm one of your tenants, I will be careful with all the furniture. I promise. I, I I'm encouraged that the house is not being sold and that the applicant has a vested interest in it being maintained and operated properly. So that's a good thing that I'm saying. And I said it first, so the applicant understands that I'm trying to find a way through this. And I think we're I would, providing a service to the town by providing some uh, housing. Okay, that's fine. So I'm not concerned about four separate leases. I said this before, I'm not concerned. I'm, I would suggest that it is the responsibility of the applicant to present a very defined and thorough resident manager proposal. So rather than us as a group trying to write this for him, it should be clear to the applicant by now what concerns us and it's not i'm not the only one miss marshall raised a number of points this is shared and the chair did also this is shared by this committee as a whole that this application pivots on the resident manager so i am sort of suggesting that it be continued in whatever mechanism that would be and that the applicant takes the time and the care to present a well thought out resident manager um, construct 
about how how the resident manager will be qualified, what those qualifications are, the circumstances, and come back to us because it should not be that difficult and it shouldn't take that much time at another meeting because we've been through everything already, it seems to me. So a I'm prepared to support a very solid resident manager proposal, and I'm prepared to oppose an informal, casual resident manager proposal. So I need to see something smart and comprehensive and that's what I'm suggesting. The applicant goes, leaves this meeting and comes back to us. Thank you. All right. Mr. White, do you have anything to say? We're going to go to public comment next, but I don't want to preclude you. Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, I mean, clearly I've been listening this entire time. And yeah, I mean, I would pretty much agree with uh, Mr. Sloboder. Um, however, if it's the kind of will of the board, uh, that we kind of put this on, on town staff, you know, and kind of condition it a little bit. Um, obviously, I trust town staff to do their jobs. Uh, my concern, though, would be, is this putting undue work on town staff um, by us kind of just putting to that off? But preferably, I would like to see this come back before the board with a more defined management plan. Okay. Mr. Wachilla? I just want to um, just say something real quick. So it seems like there's three possible pathways that we can move forward with this. The first one is to have the public hearing continued and the applicant come back with the descriptive language of the resident manager that Mr. Sloveder had requested and that everybody else also chipped in about. Second option could be to grant some sort of decision on the permit. If it was approved, you could require that the applicant return at public meeting with those updated documents. Um, make that condition of, of the permit. Or the third option would be just to rely on staff to review after the fact as well. So those are kind of like the three main options I'm sensing are come from this. So, I mean, it's up to the board to decide which avenue you want to go down. Um, just figure out, throw that out there. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Those are three good points. I don't want to make that decision until we get public comment. So that's good before we move, but that would be the order of business after we can consider that what our process is after we get public comment in. So what I'd like to do now is to move to public comment on this. Rob, do we have um, people who wish, <laughs> maybe this, maybe there's nobody that wants to comment and I've pushed us all off for no reason at all, but I'm guessing that there, there may be, there isn't. Nobody wishes to, there's no public comment. So just to reiterate those in attendance, if you wish to uh, make a comment, you can use, your, use the raise hand function or press star nine for calling in. Uh, remember, this pub comments only for the petition at hand. Our one attendee is not raising his hand, so oh, I would assume that's a no. Okay. Much ado about nothing for my concerns. All right. So the next, then, then I think we got to talk about how we proceed. And I think Mr. Sloboder, and Mr. White have made a good point. Um, Rob, you identified three possibilities. I think that um, if we're gonna if we're gonna have to come back and act, I'd rather do the whole thing at, rather than approve it now and then have the additional information come back at a later point. I think it's just cleaner to do it all at once. That's my feeling. And what I would like to get from the applicant is a good description of the a good solid description of the qualifications and the role of the project manager or the resident manager, excuse me, as well as I think it'd be helpful to have a better lease. I mean, the, the lease is, it's not, not my major concern. If you don't have a good lease, that's kind of your problem, but I'm hearing from board members that there's some concern about the lease. So there are, there are more fleshed out leases that the town has seen and you can get a, a get a hold of easily and you can amend it for the resident manager easily enough. It wouldn't take, you know, more than 10 minutes to do, it'd be a, it'd be a better lease. Personally, that's more a business decision, but I think you'll find more support for that as, uh, amongst the board members, if you have a better lease or a more fulsome lease. Um, is there other things that people would expect to come back? If we come back, we do continue this and we come back in uh, two weeks or whatever to, to look at this other concerns people have on the board. 
Ms. Greenbaum? I, I, I just wanted to say that there's a reason that we have the regulation that we collect the leases. And so mm -hmm. I think the town intended something more than just a generic lease. You know, I think that's, that's a good point. Yeah, we do collect the leases. We, we no don't ask for things for nothing. There's usually a reason why the town yeah. decided that was a good idea. And and I think that, that Mr. Gibson should take a little toot to the town hall and look at some of them. Yep. That's, that, and that you can get help from town staff on that. Absolutely. And lastly, the question you raised, Ms. Greenbaum, um, can be addressed by town staff, by Rob or Rob, uh, for our next meeting so we can clarify it. Yeah, but, we should we should know where we stand on that one. Yeah. Because if, if it's happening more and more, then we gotta we gotta know about it. Um, that's not Mr. Gibson's responsibility. That's no, no, no. I'm that's, 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 it's ours, along with a couple of other things that have become issues lately yeah. on our list. Ms. Marshall. I do think that the applicant should develop the language and the requirements, duties, whatever, but the resident manager. I would suggest, though, that he run that by planning staff before the meeting. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. People who've got had experience drafting yeah. these, working these, and the town staff is there to can be very right. helpful in this case. Right. Craig, I'll also um, send you an email about this tomorrow. So in case you miss something, you'll have a full scoop on on what to do for the next meeting. And you can watch the video. Yes, you yeah. have to watch watch the video when it becomes available. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a recorded. This yeah. Morning. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. We record all the meetings. It, it's pretty scary when you watch yourself on Zoom. I find. <laughs> In case you didn't have enough fun tonight, <laughs> you can relive it. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. You say like, you didn't have much experience with Zoom. Well, you're gonna yeah. have more than you more than you want now. It's like watching The Godfather over and over and over. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I sense a consensus here amongst our members. So what I would do is I would entertain a mo Well, before I ask the motion, Rob, how soon can we get this back up? Uh, so depends. I mean, it might be a little bit late to do it for the meeting next Thursday. I know the only yeah. person who might have potential conflict is Mr. White, because he's going to be traveling for a good part of May. Uh, Ms. Marshall, I don't know your schedule coming up, but I guess we uh, could do sometime in May if it's if it works for anybody. I mean, Philip, what times are you unavailable in May? Um, so I will be traveling until roughly just off the top of my head because I don't have my calendar in front of me. Mm -hmm. The sixteenth of May. Sixteenth. Okay. Uh, Craig, um, if it was continued to around that time, so after the sixteenth, would that be? doable in your situation i'd like to get it done i'll do what you guys oh, oh, if i could be there i will all right so let me but look at my i guess what he's asking is does, does the 16 impose a burden on does it make it difficult for you to get tenants is that too long that's what he's asking are you are you in the middle of getting tenants right now and you can't do that until you get the special permit of course so you can wait so you can wait a month uh, wait a month to get tenants. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a hardship, but, uh, um, but we haven't, we've, we haven't done it yet. So. so, well, you can't do it until we do the special permit. So that's, I just, you agree to it. So this is one. the season where a lot of people are applying. So it's, uh, it, it's significantly, uh, I mean, yeah, I just don't think, I don't know how we can do this before that um so the may 16th issue of a waiting period too the 20 day waiting period before it's legal yeah so it's the 18th um if it if it could oh sorry mr chair go ahead um if go ahead, mr. White. we could work it out um like i said that i will not be unavailable because i won't leave for travel until the first of may um, if it would be possible to get it done prior to that, I would be able to move some stuff around and be able to work it. Um, but it's just during that period, I won't be available. So, Ms. Marshall, are you available on the 20th? 
I mean, the other possibility is the 25th. Are you available? I cannot, I cannot meet on the 25th. Okay. So. Um, and, and you're leaving on the 1st of May, and I can't, I could do it on the 2nd of May. Um, we do it an I, off, off day? Excuse me. Like, yeah, we could do it on Friday, an off day. Friday, yeah. To, yeah. If, if this, if this would be the only item on an agenda and Mr. Gibson is, has submitted and is, and is fully prepared, it shouldn't be a long meeting. We could do it. Could we do it on a Tuesday? Sure. Do it on the 30th of April. We I can mean, do it on the 23rd or the 30th. I think the 23rd the might be too soon, Mr. Sloveter, because I, of advertising requirements. I think... I if if people want to do Tuesday to thirtieth at six p.m., no, it doesn't work for Miss Marshall. Is that school committee unless meeting day? Do, yes, unless we could do it at five. Five too one. early for you. Could could you do it at five? Me, Miss Marshall, could you do it at five on the thirtieth? Um, yes, I could do it at five on the thirtieth. I can. Mr. Gibson, would you be available around that time? Yes. Okay. okay. So I, I have, mean, so yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say maybe okay, so it sounds Mr. like Yvonne, the, can you do that? I Go can, on. but my wife might be there. Uh I do have a commitment at six thirty in Conway, but so what if we um I would it be so much to push you a little bit earlier to four thirty that day, or is that too early for I folks? I can do it. Four thirty. Uh, Sarah, David, Hilda, does that yeah. work for you? I'm just checking for thirty. Okay, yeah. I I can do it. We're trying to accommodate this, yeah. and if yep. everybody is efficient, mm -hmm. and do we don't talk about lighting and parking since we don't have to, <laughs> then we can get right to the resident manager, and then we're done. Can you send the all the material at least a day ahead so we can read it? I'll send it to you that Friday, the 26th beforehand. Yeah. So you guys have a few days to look it over. Right. So that would be the lease and the management plan. Yep. The lease and the management plan. And then you should have the Zoom link and stuff before that. Um, so yeah, we can make that work. And okay. I would have to, yeah, that, that should, we could do that. All right. I just, I sense a consensus. And so I, I would entertain a motion that this, App, the special permit application be uh, continued until April 30th at 4.30. At 4.30. So right. so Second. Second. Yep, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No discussion. The chair votes aye. Um, Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Ms. Greenbaum? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. And what does a dog say, Rob? Dog says aye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it unanimous. All right. So this, mo this uh, we'll see you on at 4.30 on the 30th, Mr. Gibson. All right. And work with the town staff on both the uh, responsibility, qualifications and responsibilities of a resident manager as well as uh, some leases. They can be very helpful. And um, I think we might be able to get this resolved. Yep, and I will, Craig, I'll reach out to you tomorrow um, so we can get started on that um, to work with you on, on getting that updated. Great. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. The next order of business is um, public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. So if you wish to speak on any matter, um, at all, except for the matter before the board tonight, please so indicate by raise, using the raised hand function on your screen or um, using the star nine on your, pound nine on your phone. Rob, I don't see any public comments. Oh, there's raised one. Hand. Oh, John, I just, Mr. Varner. John Varner. Mr. Varner, uh, please give your name and address for the record. Uh, John Varner, 54 Jeffrey Lane. Uh, I'm just uh, wondering about my appointment to the position of associate on zoning board uh, of appeals. Mm -hmm. uh, I understood 
in a letter from Ms. Griesmer that um, my term would begin immediately and then would be re-upped in July for the following calendar year because you're currently down a couple members of um, the zoning board right now. But I wasn't notified by anybody on the zoning board um, and I, I don't have any materials um, regarding the uh, meeting next week, which I think will be pretty momentous uh, regarding the, the solar project on Shootsbury Road. And I'm just wondering um, if my understanding is not correct about being a member now, um, if my term starts now or in July, I'm not clear about that. And if it starts now, um, if I can get uh, materials or a package of materials uh, regarding the solar project uh, so that I can get up to speed on what's going on with that for next week. Right. Um, well, there's two things there. First, um, I think you're correct that your appointment as a um, um, associate member does start. Um, you know, I have to look. I think your I think your appointment as an associate member does start now and then goes through 25. Must I be know sworn that's... in. Must be sworn yeah. in. Yeah, I must sworn in. Okay. But, there's, so you have to be sworn in, you have to do the ethics and the conflict of interest um, tutorials. Those are also responsible, you're responsible for, for doing that as well. Okay, very good. And you can get all that information from the town clerk or from the planning staff either. The next thing is that the panel for the, for your information, the panel for the Shootsbury Road is already established you are not on that panel because it began before you were here. And also we only, we identify five people for the, for each panel. And sometimes you're gonna be on a panel, sometimes you're not gonna be on a panel. That panel you won't be on. If you're interested in it, all the information regarding that application will be on the website and you can either gather it there or call the planning staff and they can direct you to how to get the information for that hearing that's coming up. But you won't have a role as a member of the ZBA for that hearing on next week on the Shootsbury Solar Panel. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, thanks for the clarification. Yep. Yeah, and I can... Go ahead, Sorry, Mr. Go ahead. I was gonna say, I wasn't really made aware that the appointment was immediate. I only think anybody notified me. So, uh, Mr. Varner, I'm the, uh, the staff person for the zoning board in the planning department. So usually, you know, I'm, I'm the main point of contact, anything regarding ZBA. Um, and I wasn't made aware by the town council or by the town manager about the, I, I guess the immediate effect of, of the appointment. So I'm going to look and ask about yep. that and make sure we're on the same page and, uh, that everything is, uh, that you have done is already taken care of and stuff. And then, we could definitely, um, you know, put you into the cycle of of uh, assigning panelists for upcoming meetings. Because trust me, there's a lot of work coming up before the zoning board. We don't, we're definitely not short of of permits and stuff like that. So you'll have plenty of opportunities to join for these future panels. Great, thanks. I I did send you an email during this meeting uh, regarding the confusion that I had about the appointment. So uh, that'll oh. prompt you for tomorrow, I guess. I see yeah. that now. Thank you. Okay, thanks Thanks for your help. No worries. So they'll clarify your term. I know there were several that were beginning immediately. You, you may be one, um, but they'll clarify your term, Mr. Varner. Okay? Thank you. Right. Any other public comments? If not, um, is there any, what do we have next week, Rob? So next week we have a, two continued hearings on April 25th. Um, the first is for the Shoes Bay Road Solar Project, which this is hearing number four now regarding that. Um, big topic is going to be peer review um, and then updates from the applicant. Um, then we also have 368A Shea Street, which has a continued hearing day as well. Um, the applicant was required to come back with a lighting plan um, or at least schematics or information. Um, and... The applicant has since changed. It's now the owner who's the applicant, and the hearing was re-advertised as such with the corrected um, information, and abutters were re-notified um, last week. So 
uh, Mr. Moore did mention that that was an appropriate avenue to do if an applicant was to change during the hearing, since it's the current owner who's now the applicant. Um, that's acceptable. Um, I was told that the applicant originally, uh, Ms. Tayden, uh, pulled out of a real estate deal. So that's why she's no longer involved with the uh, the petition. Um, and then we do have two scheduled hearings on May 9th. And other than that, there's not really much else on the on the calendar, Mr. Chair. Okay, on May 9th. Mm -hmm. All right. And we do not have any panelists selected for that one yet. I was going to start looking into that either tomorrow or early next week. Yeah, talk to folks. me about May 9th. I may be up in the... Yeah, we'll talk about May 9th. All right, cool. Sounds good. Good. All right, is there any other old business or any other new business that members of the board have for us tonight? All right. If not, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. <laughs> that motion is not debatable. All in favor, chair says aye. Mr. Sloboder? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Ms. Greenbaum? Aye. And Ms. Marshall? Aye. Vote is five to nothing. We are adjourned. <laughs>